Hey everybody! Well, as the title suggests, Sony won E3 2016 easily. And I want to quickly discuss Sony's conference and discuss the awesome games presented. I admit, I had watched several of the other E3 conferences and I found myself pretty bored during EA's and Bethesda's. And while Ubisoft was okay and Microsoft was better, but I was really looking forward to Sony's conference and it didn't disappoint. Sony's conference started with a live orchestra playing some really awesome music, which would be revealed later to be the actual new music for the new God of War, and the music is amazing, and the game looks incredible. Sean Layden then came on stage, and after introducing the orchestra, he quickly announced many great games coming out, and stepped off stage and let the games do the talking. We were presented with a really interesting action horror game called Days Gone, which I'm honestly not sure what to make of yet, though the game does look promising. Alright, next it was revealed that The Last Guardian would be finally released on October 25th, 2016, and I am really looking forward to trying it. Sony, after reviewing The Last Guardian's release date, showed a really awesome open world tactical RPG called Horizon Zero Dawn, which looks amazing and I can't wait for it. And it's scheduled to be released on February 28th, 2017. Sony's next big game was a very creative game called Detroit Become Human, which is a really creative game that has you playing as an android. And the game's core mechanic is a choice-based system, meaning different choices we make as the player can change the outcome of a situation, and the game looks really creative. And I'm really looking forward to trying it. Alright, next, Sony showed off a demo for a first-person horror game that has full VR support, and while I was wondering if it was possibly a Resident Evil game, but I wasn't sure until when, in Roman numerals, the number 7 was shown, then the title Resident Evil Biohazard appeared, and that was a really amazing surprise. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard will have full VR support, and will be released for the PlayStation 4 on January 24th, 2017, and I can't wait, but... To help hold us over, they revealed the Resident Evil 7 demo available on PSN for PlayStation Plus members. And I went and downloaded it, and I gotta say, it's epic. Capcom, you're taking Resident Evil back to its horror roots, and that's exactly what we wanted. Alright, after the major Resident Evil surprise, Sean Leiden came back on stage and revealed PlayStation VR launches October 13th. And it was revealed that over 50 VR titles are coming out this year, and... Then we got to see many of the VR games, including a really solid looking one called Farpoint, which looks like a survival exploration game, and it looks good. Sony revealed several more VR titles, including a Star Wars Battlefront X-Wing VR mission, which looks good, but I don't think it's going to be its own game. Probably just an add-on. Batman Arkham Knight VR, which we saw no gameplay of, but still it looked really interesting. Final Fantasy XV is getting VR support, but there seems to be a lot of mixed impressions if it will be good or not, but we'll just have to wait and see. After the VR games, Sony revealed Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, and I gotta say, I don't really play Call of Duty much, but even this game got me excited. The space combat looked awesome and I really want to play it. After that, Sean Layden came back on stage and revealed Crash Bandicoot's 1. 2 and 3 are getting full remasters for the PlayStation 4 and the collection comes out next year and Crash Bandicoot will first be coming out this fall in a game called Skylanders Imaginators and while I've never played Skylanders I admit I might give this one a try and I can't wait for the Crash Bandicoot remasters because I only remember trying one of them briefly when I was a kid after that the Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens trailer was shown and it looked good and it was revealed a demo was available for the game on PlayStation 4. And I tried it, and I really liked it, but everyone seems to agree this trailer was put there as basically advertising, and I agree. Alright, after that, Andy House came on stage and introduced the legendary game designer Hido Kojima, who got a hero's welcome, and he revealed the trailer for his new game, Death Stranding, which apparently Sony gave him a blank check for, but I will say if that's true, it's going to be money well spent. The trailer was creative and features a naked Norman Reedus. And while clearly whatever this game is, is nowhere near release, but it does look interesting. 
After that amazing announcement, Sony revealed the PlayStation 4 is getting an exclusive Spider-Man, which was a huge shock, and the trailer looked awesome. Now, Sony ended the conference by showing a gameplay of the game Days Gone, which was a bit of a surprise. And it is being speculated Sony was going to reveal PlayStation 4 Neo, but backed out because of the Xbox One Scorpio's insane specs, but I will discuss that in another video. Sony's conference ended showing a fast showcase of all the upcoming games, and there is a lot. And that was the end of Sony's awesome press conference. Alright, as I said at the beginning, Sony won E3. Their conference was outstanding, and they nailed the presentation by just showing game after game after game, I was blown away that I ended up pre-ordering The Last Guardian, Horizon Zero Dawn, Detroit Become Human, and Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. And believe me, there are more I plan on getting. My only real complaint is I really wish Sony would have given some of the smaller VR titles like Res Infinite or even Until Dawn Rush of Blood, which surprisingly got no real showcase at all. But these are really minor complaints. All around, Sony's conference got me really excited and I can't wait for the awesome games they're releasing. Thank you Sony, you say D3. I might have some more E3 discussion videos up soon, I'm not sure yet. I'll talk to you guys later. This is the Entertainment Wizard, signing off.